Last player standing. Shut down. Our spike is one enemy remaining. Do not hunt the hunter. Hello my friends, this is Roger for Splish Splash and for the first time on my channel you're watching some Valorant gameplay and this is actually thanks to a subscriber of mine, his name is Noxt, so thanks a lot for letting me actually <laughs> borrowing, you might say, two of your accounts to make this video possible, so a big shout out to you Noxt, thank you. Now Valorant, it's been quite a hype around this game and it's kind of interesting, as you may know it's been in closed beta for quite some time and if I'm not mistaken, uh, next week on the 2nd of June it will be in open beta and then later on, hopefully this summer the game will be fully released. The developer behind Valorant is Riot Games and some of you guys already know Riot Games, uh, they have been doing for example League of Legends and I'll come back to that uh, in a moment. Uh, the only way to actually access this closed beta was to register an account at Riot Games and then uh, you know link your Twitch account and watch some Twitch streams in order to maybe get a key. I wasn't too fancy about that but it was this thing they did. Uh, I can understand a bit why to market their game and so forth, but again, no, not a fan of it. But nevertheless, here we are and we're gonna play, we're gonna talk. Uh, this is gameplay clips and so forth from some of my first games. I haven't been spending a lot of hours into the game, uh, but at least uh, so many that I can actually say what I think about it. And uh, my first impression or my first games, uh, I've had fun. And you see me doing an ace here too, which is always nice. Uh, I've had fun playing and that is of course the most most important part at the end of the day. If, if the game is appealing to you and if you are enjoying playing it. So again, if you come from a background like me, being an FPS gamer, uh, and if you've played similar games like Counter-Strike, you're probably going to like it. There is a kind of question mark though, and that is of course the different abilities, because there's quite a few characters in here that you can choose from, different abilities, and of course there is a thought behind this that you will combine these uh, abilities, these characters, in order to get a good setup for, for the match, because some guys can, you know, uh, give you a hint of where people are on the map by shooting an arrow that will, you know, reveal their positions, the enemy's positions. And another, another one can throw like a ball of fire into the bomb site and maybe hurt an opponent or two. Uh, and there are a lot of different abilities and kind of cool, um, you know, design when it comes to this. The game has quite simple graphics and in 2020 you might have been expecting more. But on the other hand, it's also made for the Asian market. It's a free to play game and you can probably run this on very low specs or actually you can run this on very low specs. The minimum specs listed from Riot Games right now is uh, 30 frames per second if you're going really low, right? So if you have a CPU which is an Intel Core 2 Duo E8400 and a GPU that might be an Intel HD4000, you're good to go. But if you really want to play like recommended specs and, and get the most out of it, at least uh, from a kind of shooter perspective, uh, you will get 60 frames per second if you have a CPU like an Intel i3-4150, uh, GeForce GT730 at least. And you can of course go higher than that if you have better specs, uh, something that I have and it will look and run smooth even so. And performance is the thing that actually Riot Games has addressed when it comes to Valorant. They're talking about 128 tick servers and we've talked about the minimum like settings, the low spec. Uh, which means that you can play this even if you have like an old computer, uh, 60 to 144 plus FPS on modern gaming rigs, and also a kind of global spread of data centers aimed at uh, 35 milliseconds for players in major cities around the world, and a netcode that they, this is their own words, have <laughs> been obsessing over for years, and a commitment to anti-sheet from day one. Uh, of course, this sounds very promising, and if Riot Games can deliver this, well, that's great, because that is so important when you're playing a game like this. Again, if you want to talk about like a competitive part of the game, uh, let me know what you think about this. Maybe you guys have already played the closed beta, or you are looking forward to this game. Uh, what are your thoughts about it? Do you think that this game will be popular? Do you think it will be a competitive game somewhat? Let me know in the comment section. I mentioned before that it's a free-to-play game and Riot Games has made also League of Legends and I, I want to mention that again because when you're getting into these lobbies I only had time or have had time so far to play like casual uh, matches you might say and you get matched up with a lot of 
different people, meaning different backgrounds when it comes to playing a game like this. So there might be players that have, for example, been playing mostly League of Legends that comes in and, oh, it's a right game, it's free to play and it's a shooter, I want to check it out. And they do that and they have no experience at all. So uh, be aware of that. It's probably going to be the same when the open beta comes up. So it's going to be very, very random when it comes to your team, especially if you're playing uh, social, you might say. And that's just what it is. For me, uh, that has a background as an FPS gamer and also playing Counter-Strike, I've had I've definitely had an advantage, I, I can tell you that. If you have been playing Counter-Strike and if you're good at it, you will definitely do well in Valorant. Um, and getting into the competitive talk about it, they have a rank system of course when it comes to this. Um, I've already heard voices saying, uh, even though the game is not really out yet, that it's probably going to be like when it comes to the ranking system, if you are for example the silver in CSGO, you're probably going to be uh, one of the higher ranks in Valorant, if that is an adequate comparison I really don't know that's just what I've heard we'll, we'll see we'll see the future will tell and if you play Counter-Strike before you're also familiar with the in-game buy system before every round you can buy a new weapon or armor and also some of the abilities to your character depending on your economy so if you've done that before you know what I'm talking about and you are also used to that kind of money management you might say because that's actually a thing how you save your money for the next round and so forth so that's a thing also in Valorant there are of course similarities also to the guns when it comes to a comparison to Counter-Strike. I'm coming back to this all the time as you hear. Uh, and quite familiar for some of you guys when you start to use them. However, the maps are a bit different and when I say different I'm mainly thinking about all the corridors and corners that are here on this map at least. There aren't many, I, maybe it was only one actually in the closed beta, I can't remember right now. But nevertheless, uh, the map design is a bit different there, uh, it's quite a lot of corners and I didn't really feel that it was a huge problem when you're playing casual like this, but I can not kind of imagine uh, further on when the people have been playing the game a longer time, have more uh, map knowledge and also getting up the ranks so to speak, that it might become uh, more camp if I put it like that. Don't get me wrong, it's a part of the kind of game mode also when you're playing a game like this. But yeah, that, that's a reaction I've had. I'm not a huge, huge fan of the map so far. But I cannot understand why they've done like this, because they need all these corners also for the abilities. Meaning you can bounce from one wall to another in, into the bomb site if you have like a smoke or this ball of fire. Or whatever you might be using. So I mainly think that's the reason why they created the maps like this. You can see on the minimap what I'm talking about up in the left corner. That's a lot of routes, a lot of corners to, to pass by, if I put it like that. The closed beta of Valorant has been going on since April 7th. And it started out with Canada, United States, Turkey, Russia and Europe from what I can see. And they're talking about rolling out of course to other parts of the world in the months thereafter. Which probably means that from next week, meaning from the 2nd of June, if I got this right, the open beta will be available for, I hope for everyone. And maybe I meet you out there playing, let me know. And talking about playing with others, well, probably you already understand this, it's very important to communicate. Uh, I have had different experience when it comes to that too. Some people are definitely using a microphone, some aren't, and that creates problems. Uh, you don't really have time to write like in a chat or something, so I highly recommend if you're going to do well in the game, uh, get together some friends, create a team, at least have three or four if you have five that's great because then you have a full squad um, but yeah get your teammates in there your friends so you can communicate you will definitely do better in a game just by having that so you can do call outs and help each other out as much as possible most of the gameplay here you can see that i'm playing quite slow i'm checking my corners i'm trying to move with my teammates and not alone but there are a few moments when i do try to flank a bit or and i have to run away from opponents there is a clip i'm not sure where it is in this video though where i'm actually fooling two <laughs> opponents by going back and forth until i actually manage to kill them uh, so that's not a rambo thing that i would kind of uh, <laughs> what do you say encourage uh, as an overall strategy it depends of course how good the opponents are but yeah mainly this is a game about strategy and playing it together with your squad uh, moving maybe three in, into one bomb site two into another one and so forth since right games have tried to do about the same thing uh, with the guns in valorant as in csgo it does mean that it has most of the time some low time to kill and uh, so you need to land your shots you have to get the skill up and going and there are also learnable recall patterns as in CSGO or and spray patterns. So 
if you learn like how each gun works, uh, that will definitely be a key to success, or at least it will make you so much uh, of a better player. So there's guides for this, so you can check that out. Uh, if you have been playing CSGO again, you know that there's a lot of guides, a lot of uh, practice you can do when it comes to uh, learn the behavior and also manage the spray of, of uh, each gun in the game. A gun you see me using here quite some, it became more or less my favorite gun. If you have a at least a decent aim, uh, you can kill and pop people quite quick with this gun. Uh, it is called the Guardian, it's an AR uh, that is semi-automatic. It has, I think, 12 round mag, uh, by default at least, and it makes quite some damage. So yeah, your weapon of choice will of course depend on the situation in the game, but also what kind of playstyle you have. So there's something for everyone, and again, quite a lot of similarities to the guns in uh, CSGO. So you have you played that game again, you're gonna get used to these guns pretty fast, I would say. We also have to talk a bit about the different characters in the game, and also understanding that instead of like having the access to several powerful abilities on short cooldowns, as mentioned in Overwatch, uh, Valorant's character abilities are more varied, and uh, you might see that they are actually able to be bought. I think I mentioned this, almost like Fragnates or Flashbang in CSGO. So you can do that in the in-game menu before the round starts. So each character also has like an ultimate, uh, even takes uh, multiple rounds to recharge between uses. So there's like a cooldown, which I think is, is good to have. A character I used and played a lot uh, was someone called Wiper. A gal that is uh, quite poisonous, you might say, toxic emissions, and her abilities also use like a secondary resource called fuel. Left. So you're gonna activate the spike often if you pick this agent, and as your shields allow for safe planting. Now, there, there's a lot of things to say about these abilities, and of course I can't cover them all and not so much in this video. This is mainly my first impressions, a kind of review of the closed beta, what Valorant is so far. Because we just have to wait and see what will be added into the open beta, and furthermore also when it comes to the full game. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section, thumbs up and all that beautiful stuff. If you're new to my channel and like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe, put up the notifications and so forth. Have a beautiful, beautiful day, and I'll see you out there. So, bye-bye.